a pool, small pool, kiddie pool. How is that? How big the kiddie pool? The you buy them from Toys R Us. Like three feet, four feet, probably. Four feet, like end to end. Yeah. So four feet. And we're going to add water to it, and the kid's going to jump in it in a few minutes. We're going to use this pan again to add water. We'll make the pan bigger. We have a trash can. We're going to fill it with water and dump that trash can, one of those baskets. We'll say, what, 12 inches by 6 inches by 9 inches. We're going to fill them. Every minute, dump one of these into that. So the volume of this shape is 12 times 6 times 9. So we're using a bigger container here. You gotta fill it with water, carry it, and dump it into that. That's 648 cubic inches per minute. So you gotta walk into the sink, take a trash can like the size we have right there, fill it with water, clean one, because you're gonna be jumping in that water there, and dump it into the pool. And the question, so we know the volume is changing here at the rate, it's increasing at the rate of 648 cubic inches per minute. The question, how fast the, the height is changing? What is dH dt equal to? The volume for that shape, we said it's what? Pi r squared times h. r equals two feet, which is how many inches? 24 inches. So the equation for this pool is pi times 24 squared times h. 24 squared, 576. Now take the derivative with respect to t. The derivative with respect to t, dv dt. Again, this is a constant, stays in the front. The derivative h, dh dt. Plug in the numbers. We know dv dt is 648 equals 5, 7, 6 pi times dh dt. And we can find how quickly the height is changing. This is in inches per minute. That's how fast it's rising. We dump one of these containers every minute. We want to know how fast the height of that pool is rising. Again, small pool. Four feet long from end to end, kitty pool. 648 divided by parentheses, put them 576 pi. Close parentheses. At the rate of 0.36 cubic, I mean, in, not cubic, inches per minute, that's the height. So that's how fast the water is rising in the pool. So almost every three minutes, we have one inch of water. Every three minutes, we have another inch of water. Another three minutes, we have one inch of water. It's not a big pool. It's not going to take long to fill it with water. Let's take a different problem. Let's see, let's see, what do we have for a shape? We have a sphere, a water tank. This is the stand, <coughs> and the water tank looks like this sphere, filled with water. You know, for the town here, the water comes from that. It's a sphere, three dimension. Let's say the radius of that. These tanks are really big. Uh, 
10 feet, uh, more than 10 feet. That's not, no, 10 feet is not that big. Maybe 100 foot radius, 150 foot? Big. Are they big? You yeah, yeah. Are they? Yeah. So, okay, so it's a 50 feet radius, okay. <coughs> Instead of actually Because what's going to happen, the water is going to drop in this one. The shape doesn't change. I wasn't thinking of that. Uh, you know what? Let's make it a uh, balloon. Balloon. Same shape. Except not a 50 feet uh, radius. It could be a hot air balloon. I could even make a hot air balloon. We'll make just a normal balloon here. Um, I'll say what? Big size along 12 inches. So that's three to six inches. You know, you blow the air in it, then you let go. What happens? The air starts to leak out. So the air is coming out because you didn't tie a knot here, all this air coming out of it. What happens to the volume? Start to decrease. So if the volume of the air coming out, it's decreasing, it's coming out, so it's a negative. You're not adding air, you're subtracting air from it. It's negative. At the rate, I don't know, of, they don't last long, these balloons, when you let them go. A few seconds, like 10 seconds, gone. But let's say it's at three cubic inches per second. That's how fast the air is coming out. And the question, what's gonna happen to that balloon? It's going to shrink. So what is the change in the radius? That's what I'm looking for. How fast that balloon is shrinking? <coughs> Bless you. Well, I need to find an equation that will tie a volume to the radius of a, looks like a sphere. The balloon looks like a sphere. And we do have an equation, the volume of a sphere. If you don't know it, you can Google that. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. four-thirds pi r cubed. Now, the volume is, let's take the derivative. The derivative of that is dv dt. Four-thirds pi is a constant, leave it alone. What is the derivative r cubed? Three what? Three R Keep going, you're not done. DR DT. We take in the derivative with respect to T. These two will cancel each other out. So I have DV DT equals four pi R squared DR DT. Plug in the value, dv dt is what? Negative three, four pi, and the radius is what? Six, what is six squared? 36. Can we get dr dt? The air has come out really slow, three, cubic inches per second, that's not a lot, like a small hole in it. It's not that you let it go, it's a small tiny hole. Like um, stepped on a tiny needle and it's leaking air now. Three divided by four times 36 times pi, is it? At the rate of point zero zero seven inches per second. So the radius is shrinking at the rate of seven inches per second, point zero zero seven. It on this rate, it takes about 17 minutes or 16 minutes, maybe even not 16, for it to be completely gone, maybe 15 minutes. Because small, small leak in it. It's not a big leak. Like when you have, when you're driving your car, you step on a nail and you drive over a nail, you see a small leak there. 
you drive home, nothing wrong with it, you get up in the morning, everything is deflated because it takes a long time. And that's what happened here. Well, let's try a couple more examples than we've done. Let's say we have a corn. The corn looks like this. And it has water in it again, up to here. And the water is going to be leaking out, coming out the water. First, let me give you some dimension for the corn. It has a height. Uh, let's see, what is the height of the corn here is going to be? I don't know, you want to pick a number? Go ahead. Five inches. Five inches. Has a radius or diameter. You want to pick a number for a diameter? Do five inches again? Doesn't really matter what we use. And there's water coming, there's a hole in the bottom, could be an ice cream cone, giant ice cream cone. And it's leaking. The bottom, there's a little hole, the ice cream is dripping there, coming out of it. I watched that guy eating the hot dog, 60, 62 hot dogs in eight minutes. Terrible. And the loser got 60 hot dogs and he lost in eight minutes. So this is a giant ice cream for the 4th of July. Five inches by five inches. If you can finish, it's free for you. So it's dripping there because it's hot outside. And the ice cream is dripping at not too fast at the rate of five cubic inches per second, that'll be really fast. Let's go per second. It's coming out, that's the volume changing. It's melted and you get the chocolate out the bottom. The trick is to get one without with nuts in it, then the nuts will seal the bottom, and less will drip there. Find how fast the height is changing. As you're eating that, the height is dropping, right? What is DHDT? This is a little bit trickier here, this one. I have to look at the back of the book for the equation, which is we have in our book here, the cover sheet, the equation for all the shapes. For a cone like this one, it is the volume pi r square h divided by 3. So I need help with that, so I found the equation. Pi r squared h divided by 3. If I go and take the derivative, I'm going to have a problem here. Because I don't know what r is, and I don't know what h is. I'm going to do it the, the wrong way, intentionally. Watch, if I left it there, I can write that pi over 3 times r squared times h, right? This is not going to work the way I'm going to do it right now. Well, what's the derivative? The question is find dh dt. Okay. And I got to tell you when. When the height, because maybe it wasn't full to the top. Maybe the height was already four inches here. Let's say four inches. So it already dripped a little bit. You can see it from my picture. I'm looking for it when the height is four inches. I got to tell you what time for this one. If I take the derivative of this, the derivative dv dt, and you're going to see this is not going to work. It's pi over 3 is a constant times, let's take the derivative of this. We have a product rule here, r squared times h. The derivative, the first, which is r squared, times the derivative h, which is what? dh dt plus h times the derivative r squared, which is what? 2r times, keep going, dr dt. Dr 
you can see I have a problem. I have no idea how fast DR is changing. I'm looking for DH. I have two unknowns already. I know what H, I don't know what R. There is actually a relationship between R and H here. Maybe you don't see it. If I draw a diagram here, let's draw this one. This is the height. This is R. At any given point, this is the height in R. We have actually what we call similar triangles. Can you see them? This is one triangle. There's the other one. You get similar triangles. So the ratio of R to H will be the same as this R to this H. Well, what's that R? Two and a half. What's that H? Five. So the ratio of R to H is one to two. I can use that ratio because I know what H is, but that still doesn't help me. I don't know what dr dt. So this is where you have the best way to do it. What's better than this, what you want to do, is when you get that equation before you take the derivative, is replace, since you're looking for dh dt, replace r with the value from this, if you do the math, what is r equal to? One half h. At any given time, the r will always be one half h. Similar triangles. So if I do that substitution in here, my equation now will turn to, this is the good, now this is the correct way of doing it, pi over three, in place of r, let's put what? One half h, and you're gonna square it, times h. Isn't that one fourth h squared? One fourth times one third, that becomes one twelve h cube. That's the volume of the coin at any given time with respect to h only. You want to find the derivative? The derivative of this dv dt equals pi over 12 is a constant. Derivative h cube is what? 3h squared times dh dt. So dv dt, it's pi over 4, 4, not h, times h squared dh dt. Now plug in your numbers and you have an answer. We know dv dt, the ice cream is coming out at the rate of 5 cubic inches per second. That's a negative 5 because it's coming out decreasing. Pi over 4 times h squared, h is 4, that's 4 squared, uh, that would be what, 4 pi here? So what's negative 5 divided by 4 pi? 5 divided by parentheses 4 pi. 0.4 inches per second. So the ice cream is coming out really fast. You're not going to have a lot of ice cream. So enough is going to be gone. It's like water. 0.4 inches every second. Almost in one second, you have almost an inch gone. You only have five inches left. And as you travel down, there's less and less ice cream because there's less of them. When you hire, there's way more ice cream. So that won't even last that long. It's not going to be well. But since you got four inches left, it's going to be eight minutes. No, it doesn't work that way. At the top, you have a lot of ice cream. So at that rate coming down, when you get to the bottom, there's not much ice cream. When you're right here, the whole thing will drop in less than a second. Boom, when you're one inch high. There's not much ice cream left there. But at that time, at four inches height, the rate is coming out is 0.4 
it, their height is dropping at the rate of 0.4 inches every second. So this wasn't a good move, this is the right move of doing it. One more example, we saw a picture of a plane traveling. Here we go. We got this aircraft going to Bradley Airport, small plane, flying at a speed of 130 miles per hour at a height that speed really, we'll see if we need it or not. At a height, I don't know, 5,000 feet. It's not going to be landing. It's just flying over Bradley Airport. Uh, the distance from Bradley to we have a radar here the radar tracking the plane. The distance right now, the plane, this way, that distance from BDL, that's Bradley Airport, is 10,000 feet, about two miles away. A foot, I mean a mile is 5,280 feet. So the plane is about two miles away, one mile high. So that distance between them is shrinking. Hundred and thirty miles per hour. A small plane. That's actually good speed. Okay. Yep. I fly an Archer three, Cherokee Archer three. That's about one hundred and fifteen miles per hour, unless the wind is pushing me. Arrow is about one thirty five, one forty. Yeah. Notice this dx dt. If I call this x, I call this is y. I call this is S, what I'm looking for, DS, DT. What's the rate? Since the plane's flying at 130 miles per hour, that's DX, DT. How fast the plane is traveling. Distance divided by time. If you didn't take physics, that's velocity. That's 130, but that's miles per hour. I need to convert that maybe feet per second. So the way we convert that miles on the top per hour, we'll put hours on the bottom. A mile has how many feet in it? 5,280 feet, yep. Notice I put miles on the bottom because miles on the top. I want to cancel them out. I need to cancel the hours to convert that to seconds. I need hours on the top, seconds on the bottom. One hour has how many seconds? 3,600, right? 60 times 60 is 3,600. So that's a 3,600 in case you can't see it. So how fast the plane is moving? How many feet per second? It should be a good, good distance. 130 times 5,280 divided by 3,600. It's moving roughly approximately. It's 190.6, I'll go 191. Feet, 190 is fine. Significant digits. I should be 191. I want to use two significant digits. How is that? Just make my life easy. Could use 191. It is 191. One, that's bugging me. Uh, 190, 191, you're going to be fine. That's how fast X is changing. The question, how fast S is changing? Well, I need to find the relationship between S and X. Can we find one? This is S, not a 5. I'm looking for DS, DT. Can I find an equation that ties S with X? 
And why? Look at the shape. What do you see there? What kind of triangle? So what do we have? Is there something right triangle that will tie them together? Pythagorean's theorem. C squared equals what? A squared plus B squared, right? Here, C is actually S. Here's the good news. The height is not really changing. The plane is flying, it's not landing, the plane is flying horizontally. Otherwise, I gotta tell you how fast the plane is dropping. This plane just flying over Bradley, continue all the way to, uh, I don't know where they go, in Boston. So my height never changes. I'm flying horizontally. I'm just gonna fly over Bradley and continue to fly. So that's 5,000 squared. which is 25 million. I don't care about it. Because now I'm going to take the derivative. What's the derivative of S squared? 2S, keep going. DS DT, very good. What's the derivative of X squared? 2X times what? DX DT. What's the derivative of a constant? I don't care how big that number is. Zero. Plug in the values. There's the two. Oh, I didn't tell you when, when the distance is 10,000. Do we know how far S is? Yes. We're going to calculate it, right? So S squared equals 10,000 squared plus 5,000 squared. <laughs> 10,000 squared plus 5,000 squared. And it's a big number. One, two, five, and lots of, I think, six zeros after it. Can we get what S is, the square root of that number? One 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 eight zero feet. The plane S, if you measure distance from the radar to the plane, roughly eleven thousand one hundred eighty feet. So now let's plug in the numbers. Two times S. What is S? One 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 eight zero times DSDT. I'm looking for that. Equals. 2 times x. x is what? At that time, the plane was 10,000 feet away. And dx dt is what? 191. Can we get ds dt here? What I should have put one little thing and that's what? I should have made that 191 what? Positive or negative? Is the distance increasing toward the radar or decreasing? That should have been a negative. So that means this distance has to be a negative 171 roughly feet per second that distance is decreasing at the rate, at that time, at the rate of 171 feet per second. As the plane gets closer and closer, that distance will start to decrease at a much faster rate. And that's how we deal with rate rates, you know. You see in a few examples, you'll have some homework on them.